The fastest way to learn SQL is not what you might think. But why even care? Well, with SQL, you can stand out and get a job in data. It first appeared in 1974, over 50 years ago, and wow, time flies. We use SQL to manage relational databases, and imagine massive spreadsheets that store data in a structured format with rows and columns. Now, here's a word for you. Syntax refers to the rules of a language, and SQL has an easy syntax that you can pick up quite Quite quickly and it's like basic English. You select data from a table where certain conditions are true. Simple, right? So why is everybody struggling to learn SQL? Well, the short answer is they lack a clear plan, or their plan just sucks. They dabble around and get stuck in a loop of learning, but not you after watching this video. So back to SQL. In Excel, you can modify your data manually. You just select one of the cells anywhere on the sheet and change it manually. But SQL is different, and it's a query language used to communicate with your database indirectly, where you'll write SQL code with instructions, which then tells the database what to do. And why is that the case? Case, right? I mean, it sounds like you're overcomplicating things. Yes, at first, it is more complicated to write SQL. You have to learn a whole new language to do basic stuff. But in the long run, SQL becomes way more efficient because, first of all, it can handle larger data volumes. And once you know the syntax, you can do some really cool stuff quickly. So now the first step in learning SQL is to install it on your computer. <laughs> Really? And you're going to need a software called DBMS or Database Management System to do so. There are four main DBMSs and it's PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQLite and Microsoft SQL Server. And while that's confusing, which one do we choose? But it actually gets even worse because each database management system has its own type of SQL as well. And you cannot run the same SQL code across different database management systems. So if you think it sounds like a mess, then yeah, it very much is. But here's why. There's a reason. So back in the 1980s, when SQL was first developed, each vendor already had their own type of SQL to manage databases, and they'd created this SQL for themselves to just fit their system. And these were very different compared to each other and pretty hard to switch in between. So some smart people decided to create a standard form of SQL, which later became the official SQL language. So great, now we can switch to a universal form so you don't have to learn different types of SQL, or so we thought. The problem is that no vendor is entirely following it. What? But thanks to the SQL standard, the differences are quite minimal nowadays, and it's pretty simple to go between them. And today, each version is called a SQL dialect. So back to the question, right? Which one should you choose? According to data from Stack Overflow, reporting on the most popular database technologies in 2024, number one was PostgreSQL, reported at 48%. We then have MySQL at 40% and SQLite at 33%. And finally, Microsoft SQL Server at 25%. So I recommend PostgreSQL because of X, Y, and Z. Okay, no, it's just popular. It's also close to standard SQL, and it's going to be pretty easy to learn any form of SQL if you just need to. MySQL is also a great choice, a very popular one for beginners, and it doesn't really matter too much. Just get started with one. Moving to step two. And the next big mistake people make is studying like you have an upcoming exam. Let's say that you're learning Spanish with a friend, and your friend is going to read the textbook repeatedly, practicing every word of the textbook and spending hours and hours on grammar. That's going to be a really terrible experience, but your friend has decided to do so. And you, on the other hand, will put yourself out there talking to native speakers. You'll sometimes struggle and feel stupid, ending up in awkward situations, but you'll use the language in real situations, watch movies, and Google up grammar or words when you need to. Who's learning faster, do you think? You don't need to remember every word or syntax for SQL, and you're gonna learn this stuff automatically as you practice, because you have to. So instead, I would focus on the fundamentals of databases and SQL theory when you get started, which includes how databases are made up and how SQL actually works. How do you store data properly in your database so that it's easy to retrieve while taking the least amount of space? And you could probably learn the basic theory in a couple of hours. All right, so now you've got the database fundamentals down, and then you may proceed with the next step, which is learn basic SQL commands and how to interact with the database. Now, we're still not cramming any SQL syntax, but you'll of course need to understand how SQL statements work to be able to achieve anything. This is where we start in writing and customizing actual queries, like select everything from table where 
x is greater than 5. You'll query data from your database, which means retrieve it and manipulate or edit tables. You'll implement some filters and sorting, work with multiple tables, and try to join them together. And playing around to really understand SQL is great, so don't be afraid of making mistakes and figuring things out as you go. And that brings us to step 4. And I've analyzed how people actually learn SQL. And the number one thing that people regret that leads to wasted months with no progress is that they didn't practice soon enough. And when they did practice, it wasn't the right way. There are great SQL courses, both paid and on YouTube for free. But practice is about problem solving and imperfection, so start doing projects. Ideally, start with an idea and go through it yourself. And when you don't know something, you'll have to find it. And so you will. And you're going to learn so much from doing this. You can also do a guided projects as it's quite easy to start, where it's kind of like a project where the steps are already laid out for you. And you can follow along with the instructor over video. Now, I also like following a learning path and having a very clear goal. And hands-on practice is really the key when learning SQL. And that's why I'd choose DataCamp. DataCamp's SQL Fundamentals Learning Path covers everything you need to master SQL from beginner to advanced all in one place. What I really like about the platform is that it's fully interactive, so you're not just watching tutorials, but you're actually working real projects and coding directly on their site, helping you learn by doing and really building confidence. DataCamp is sponsoring this video, and if you're serious about SQL, I highly recommend their SQL Associate Certification, which is going to test your skills in SQL with a timed exam and also a real-world project to complete in 30 days. It's the perfect way to prove your abilities and take your SQL capabilities to the next level. So check the link in the description to join DataCamp for free and start working on your SQL certification. Certification. And now we're moving to part six, and I'm going to answer the most important question ever to learn SQL. When is it enough? If you don't know when you've learned enough SQL, you'll never be done. You'll always be learning SQL and you'll be stuck learning SQL forever. And I mean, it's quite fun to practice SQL, but that doesn't sound so great. So I'm going to give you the best answer that I can. If you know the fundamentals, you can pretty much Google just anything you don't understand, except for in the interviews. So here are three things that you'll be asked during interviews, and you need to know these three things. Number one is going to be database fundamentals. Do you understand the theory and how databases actually work? You don't have to be an expert, but you should be able to at least understand everything in a beginner course about databases and SQL. There are great options on YouTube to test your knowledge and brush up on any areas where you're lacking. Number two, do you know the SQL syntax? I know that I spoke about, well, it's not a great idea to memorize everything, but for interviews, you're going to have to memorize some of it. Do you understand the SQL language and its features from select statements to window functions? But again, like when you practice, you're naturally going to learn this, so I would avoid cramming too much and just focus on solving problems. And number three is going to be SQL application. Can you apply SQL to whatever you're doing? If you're a data analyst, can you independently clean, organize, and analyze data with SQL? This is job specific and requires a understanding of the other two, and you need database fundamentals and SQL syntax and specific problem solving skills for the case that you're using SQL for to make it really effective. Remember that companies don't really care if you know SQL, they care that you can do the things that they want to do to help them improve their business. So being able to apply it to the specific use case is very good. If you're on the fence, I would also review some interview questions to see if you're ready. But also check out this other video where we cover another SQL course that you might be interested in in detail and it's helped a lot of people learn SQL so you might want to check it out and uh, if not, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.